Stephen Mansfield, New York Times bestselling author and speaker. Doug Tenapel, I'm the creator of Earthworm Jim. Tweet groups. I'm Victor Dweck. Joseph Carter, I'm the Mink Man. This is Dave Baker from Forged and Fire. This is Liam Morgan. I'm a comedian, and this is why you should never, ne never, never, don't ever, not ever. Don't waste your time. Oh, you really should. For listening to those darling, yummy. Reverend and the Reprobate. Hey, everybody. You Welcome to, to the you Reverend have to work and for the Reprobate. It. We are excited <laughs> to have our dads on with us today. I'm Lucas Pinkert. I'll be playing the part of the Reverend. Dan Lee Gibson is with me, as always, the Reprobate, repping a college that his child loves and he never went to. Alongside us. Yeah, is that wrong? Is, he, uh, he didn't go to A&M, but his, he's got A&M <laughs> yeah. on his truck. When you pay for it, you get to. You get yeah, a, uh, a, Greg when Reed. you pay for it, Greg you get uh, to do it. So sitting to my left, you're right on the radio dial is um, my dad, Scott Pinkard, who's getting his uh, St. Arnold's root beer opened. Um, what's up, Dad? Hey, Lugie, how are you? I'm, I'm fantastic. Good. Good. Uh, and then next to him is uh, is somebody I'm going to let Dan Lee introduce. Mr. Gregory Nelson Gibson. Oh, Nelson. Thank you so Nelson. much. Nelson. Yeah. Wow. This is good to know. So how, how did you get the name Nelson? Nelson is the name of my father's best friend who I never met. Oh, huh. How did Danley get the middle name English? <laughs> okay, this is going to be the entire show now. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. That's there a loaded a, question, and you it, know it. It was, <laughs> it was from Dr. English. <laughs> yes, that's an old family name from his side of the family. I mean, from... Uh, from, from, yeah, from his, that's from, from Danley's side of the family? I don't, family I don't from, claim that. From his, from his mother's side of the family. English is a, a, fa is a last name from yes. a couple generations back. Highly Thank revered... You. The most popular name in American history, according to uh, his grandmother. Well done. I heard it growing Dan up English. every every time I saw her. Oh, Danley yeah. English. Mm -hmm. And then she promised to give me a nickel to do something, and I never <laughs> saw one. If you, if you had a nickel for every time she said she was going to give you a nickel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd have zero nickels. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so thanks for coming. Yeah, uh, we had we had our moms on uh, a couple of months ago. Actually, last month because of Mother's Day, had them in studio. They were both very nervous. We talked to our dads about this. They needed no convincing to come on yeah. at all. While our moms, we needed to make up the story that the other mom had already said yes in order that they would come on. I did set I did set, set some ground rules though. Oh, okay. Let's talk Greg's ground rules. I want to have the opportunity. I want to have the right to storm off and discuss at any point that I need to. Well, that's why we that's why we <laughs> trapped y'all in the back. <laughs> so it would be really difficult. That's it. I'm out of here. Yeah. And I think the nice. chances of you storming off where there's Reese's on the table is <laughs> very heavy. Well, that and it would take me about 20 minutes to make the exit, which would be really awkward. Danley and, had yeah. already mentioned he was like we we need to be really careful because there's going to be people with hip problems that are going to be part of this <laughs> episode. <laughs> So they're very hip. <laughs> yeah, they're very super hip guys. Well, we, we we did think you know with the moms having uh, a little bit of a cold start, maybe we would do an icebreaker. So, where do you guys lie on vaccinations? I'm just playing. That was so, not, that was so. that was not the icebreaker that we were going to go with. <laughs> the next question was, "What do you think about LeBron James?" So we, were just, we just figured we'd, we'd start off with with some easy stuff. Now we do have a bunch of interesting questions for y'all, but we want to start off with some of the same things that we asked our moms to see whether or not the answers vary. All right, and the first thing that we want to know is, what do you think is the most annoying habit that our wives have? <laughs> <laughs> that was a question that, that the mothers had to deal with off air so when we were growing up Danley and i weren't uh we weren't the easiest kids to raise we're, we're sure so what what were our most annoying habits growing up wow mm -hmm. yeah that, that's the icebreaker. <laughs> yeah, there, there's our intro. And our intro. stop we, down. Yeah. Can we go with like a top 10? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's a top 10? I, I don't know. It's just, it's overwhelming, the amount of information. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Yeah, it's like one of the screens off the Matrix. It's all this stuff. Like, wow. <laughs> just downloading know, ones and zeros. I don't know what to pick. Okay, tell you what, while you're thinking about that, yeah. mm -hmm. what is each of your favorite Mel Brooks movies? Oh, that's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I also have a hard time picking, but gun to your head with the 22. I have to start out with the producers, as you would probably well know. Yeah. Because I think it's probably the best film ever made in the entire human history of. Oh, wow. Of, of cinema, cinematographic 
opportunities. It's just it's it is funny. It is it is beautifully crafted. It's you know it's it's a it's a ode to 1960s filmmaking, when, which means you look at it and it's just a it's just a it's awful looking. Yes, and um, super slow. I watched it for the first time, which yesterday. puts a lot of people off because they look at it and think it's this looks like a bad 1950s film. It's like, well, no, but it it, it, it was it was a bad 1960s film, but <laughs> but it, they they knew it when they did it, and it's, yeah. it's just it's beautifully crafted. It was originally written as a short story that was then developed, and and the publisher said this will never work as a short story. You should write it as a novel. And he wrote it as a novel. He said this will never work. You should write it as a play. Then he, he developed it out to a play, and they said this will never work. You should make a movie of it. They made the movie of it, and then made a play of it. And as far as I know, they hadn't come and out then, with a book of it and since then, then. Remade the movie and yeah, just did a terrible oh, they job. Just butchered it. So Kirsten and I both watched the producers for the first time, and she thought it was okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She was not a fan of the secretary. She didn't think yeah. the secretary yeah. added much value yeah. to the movie I would at think all. Any woman in today's society would look at that and not really have much love for the secretary. Where all the yeah. men look and say, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah." She that happened, and my like I could. She had her head on my shoulders, and I could feel her eyes roll whenever that happened. I was like, "Oh boy, weird." There, I will say I didn't there, even bring are, it up on the way home. There are very few people who watch the producers that I turn them on to the film right. who come back and report to me that they love it nearly as much as I do. There's yeah. few people that do. Not not many. Uh, no, not many people like it very much. I guess is what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, mo- I mean, everyone comes back and says, "Yeah, that's it it good." But I'm, you know, and I always say this is one of the greatest films ever made. Yeah, it's I one of my so favorites. Too. I love it. I love everything about it. And they'll come back and this. They'll say, eh, it, was, "It was okay." So I did not inherit. Uh, your woodworking love, but mm-hmm. I did of the the love of the producers. Yeah, and mm-hmm. Time Bandits, another good movie. Yeah, I'm gonna have oh. to take your word for that one. That's also Let's check great. It out. Time Bandits yeah. is Time Bandits is, is worth great. it. All right. All right, it's probably easier for you to like than producers. I bet. I, I enjoy the producers, but I w- I would take your word for that yeah. as well. All and right, Scooter. What do you think? What's your favorite Mel Brooks movie? Mel Brooks. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to say, I've never seen the producers, mm-hmm. but I will now. I'll I'll rectify that. Make sure, yeah, but don't watch the, the right. Will Ferrell one. Yeah, <laughs> no. As mom, as mom calls him that idiot. <laughs> as, that soon is, as, as soon as my mom sees anything with Will Ferrell, she's like, "Oh, not another down. movie with that idiot in it." She <laughs> hates it. Biggest stop down in the world. Yeah, that she cannot stand million it. Multi-million dollar idiot. idiot. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, the one. one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yep. the one. She can't stand any of it. Um, you know. I would have just, I really, everything that I've seen of his, I really appreciate the body work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and just when I was listening to Greg talk about this stuff with making the producers, I was just thinking how talented is this guy to oh, have yeah. gone through all these different, you know, these different building blocks with this one thing. And he had a passion for this one thing. And he took it from this step to that step to this step and circled back around. And 99.9 percent of the people that I know would have blown it up after the second, yeah. the second, the second go around on it. You know, he started out as a writer on the, your show of shows, the Sid Caesar Radio. Mm-hmm. So that, his 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 credentials as a writer just goes back that far in terms of wow. the amount of talent that he's been able to. So these guys, and he's best friends with Carl Reiner. Yeah, uh, was. Let's see. So growing was. up with him, you know who Sid Caesar is. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, well, at least you're aware. Uh, of it, I'm, right? I'm aware of him. Yeah. You're aware of it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, yeah, no, I appreciate that because, um, you know, my generation, we we would have been on the very edge of having any kind of, of him having any kind of relevance to us at all. Hmm. So. Sid Caesar, you mean? Mm-hmm. Not Mel Brooks, though. Not Mel Brooks. No, no he was like in y'all's wheelhouse. Yeah. Oh gosh, Blazing yes. Saddles, yes. Young Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. Um, the history of the world, spaceballs, spaceballs, Sim- you know, stuff, <laughs> okay, stuff so that I enjoyed, stuff that I enjoyed with my kids. And yeah, spaceballs you could enjoy with with kids. Very few of his things I could enjoy. Where you're com- they're combing the sand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, <laughs> they have the pick. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, because yeah, spaceballs was one of the first. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was my first exposure to Mel Brooks, and I think the second one was uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. which yeah. which is another just absolute classic. Tight? Tights. Yep. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm, <laughs> we knew. There's squoils. We knew. We can the, bless them all until we get vishnicked. <laughs> we knew both the dance and every word to that song yeah. whenever we were okay. growing up. Back so to my, the annoying habits. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Answers to the 
questions we <laughs> maybe, all really want to know. Maybe now that you bring that up, Matt yeah, might yeah. have been one. Of, he has uh, he has a, a pretty good memory, but oh my it gosh, seems it's so annoying. It's but it seems like the more <laughs> the more obscure and the more annoying <laughs> he can he's, he can bring that it. stuff yeah yep. so he'll remember something from 15 years ago and just spit it out word for word and looking at you the whole time knowing that you didn't want to hear it 15 years ago you surely don't want to hear it now <laughs> just non-stop just da -da 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 -da. Well, that was a, what did what did colton bring up the other day the cartoon song Do oh you remember yeah, the, yeah. the cartoons, cartoons got, got saved, saved. yeah do you remember that song? No. What if cartoons got saved? Oh, it was such a beating. It was on KLTY <laughs> all say, the time. They, they did the Smurfs. I was thinking yeah. of they. Yeah. What Smurfs. If, yeah. So yes, they yes, start. Yes, yes, yes. Colton brings it up, and then he just like brings up one thing. Oh, He's like, poor and kid. the whole song just <laughs> starts playing in my head, and I'm singing it like yeah, but oh, do yeah. like you rap. just heard it yesterday. Yes, right. it's it's the worst. Okay, next topic. Uh, fathers do a lot of the discipline in the house, right? Yes. So rank your top five spankings. <laughs> <laughs> that I received or that no, I gave? No, no, that you, no, that you that distributed. That you I could, distributed. Yeah. Okay. We, we must have done something that just really just extra pissed you off. <laughs> and you go, this, this is number one yeah, right here. Top of the list. <laughs> See, moms didn't get all of these questions. No. Yeah. No, that, <laughs> these are different than the mom these, questions. I, you know, Majin would probably disagree. Okay. But I don't recall that I ever gave any spankings. I probably did, but there were honestly we didn't do that a lot. Well, now we grounded you me. We, you know, <laughs> we did other things. Do you regret you, that you, now? You may, that you may you disagree. <laughs> but I, I can't. I honestly can't recall. Giving any well, so spank. the follow up question is: I think he is did. Now but that I don't you, have anything that sticks out I, of my yeah, mind. Yeah, either, now that so you I'm see what you. he's grown up into, do you regret not giving more spankings? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, 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 there could have been a little more work done. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't remember. I don't like. I don't remember any of it being like real formative, real pleasant. I was. I don't remember of it, any of it being <laughs> you know, real so pleasant don't really, either. Don't really, that, that wow, that comment. was great. That Can I have really, another one? <laughs> I don't really think that there's. Uh, this feels like uh, so much personal <laughs> growth. I don't, I don't know that I. I don't know that I can rank the top five. I could. <laughs> Probably think of time where I should have gone to that instead of something else. But, yeah, potentially. But yeah, I, I, I would much rather talk it out and yeah uh, i think those are for me and then that's hit a, us for no reason yeah yeah basically. yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's i'd rather just knock my kid out yes. catch him off guard basically that's <laughs> yeah. more fun yeah. <laughs> exactly. okay oops maybe what uh w what we really wanted to you, get at you know you had that coming yeah just, oh for sure what um what thing that we did that we got in trouble for right do you secretly wish you would have gotten to be a part of? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like you get home, mom's yeah. all kinds yeah, she's of mad, furious. and she tells Wait you about till it. Wait till you talk you, to your father, and yeah. you have to bite your tongue to stop from laughing. Yeah, because going, you're that like, sounds ah, awesome. You know what? Yeah. Is there a scenario that you? Can I pick can't up? remember a specific one, but if there was, it was with you and Benjamin, and Leslie, and uh, and Eric. I would assume would have been getting in, in cahoots doing something. Getting into yeah. a a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There was I, some of that. I would see that. There was the wall of fire. Okay, so this has been alluded to several times, and I'm finally just going to call you on it. Is this the napalm incident? No. This is <laughs> I'm interested in the wall of fire, Danley. This is different. Uh, so. The, statu <laughs> the statue of limitations <laughs> is up. The statue of limitations. Yeah. What we are, we are so putting together the statue of limitations right so now. So we, we got a bunch of toilet paper, and we weren't exactly sure what was going to happen with it. And we did have some of the homemade <laughs> napalm also. Yeah. So it's we always were, a good start. We were it's a out, great start. We were out in the woods late at night. Ooh. It was probably 2 a.m. Yeah. You were not aware that we weren't in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just telling you the truth. This is, this is what it is now. Uh, and it was it was on. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was a non-used street or a very uh, rural, you know, little road with nothing around it, just trees. And we lined the road with toilet paper <laughs> and then the gasoline, and then <laughs> waited. So the best part of this story, and I'm sorry that it's not a great story for those that are listening. I mean, it's, I wouldn't recommend it, but. <laughs> 
I just love it from the perspective of the driver <laughs> that at 2 a.m. driving on a rural road, all of a sudden, a wall of fire comes across <laughs> six feet tall with all of this toilet paper and burnt and, uh, and gasoline. They had to have thought that the devil was coming for them. <laughs> so that is one story that I've never told before. I can, I can beat that. Oh, yes. Nice. Ready. This, 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 is, um, this is full confessional time here. This Perfect. Is, I like this. This no is ma- what we brought you all No matter for. how stupid anything that you did was, no way. I can beat it. Wow. This is impressive. <laughs> Back <laughs> when I was in junior high, there was a good friend of mine and I mm-hmm. who were really into thinking we could design and make rockets. Sweet. <laughs> And Damn. not only that, we could design and make our own gunpowder for said rockets. So, so it's the plot of uh, uh, re, uh, wow, what's the m- Red Ock? No, yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking yeah, about. October the, something. Yeah, yeah. October, October Sky. Sky. Yeah, yeah. October Sky. The, the kids making the rockets. So, we, yeah, and I don't remember exactly what it is. Plus, I probably shouldn't say for the kids of America who you, well, I don't want to tell them how to make gunpowder, but it Third involves it, it, <laughs> it involves uh, uh, charcoal, saltpeter, and something else. I don't know which. And again, probably best that I don't give it out anyway. But we'd make our own gunpowder. And then, you know, of course, we could make our own rockets. Didn't really have a lot of material for the rockets, so we would just take, you know, Coke cans and cut them up, you know, and, and build them into said rocket shapes, and we would make the little feet for the Coke cans out <laughs> yeah. of the same... You're like, there we go. Out of the <laughs> same aluminum of the thing. They looked like they would stand up, and then we would pack them full of gunpowder right, and attach a fuse, and we would light it and run away. And invariably, it would just fall over and <laughs> <laughs> but when i think of you know how close i came to just you know blowing myself up <laughs> honestly probably 50 times <laughs> we never got any better at it <laughs> but you know you're like maybe we should try a dr pepper can <laughs> next <laughs> You know, we, we didn't blow ourselves up. We didn't burn anybody or anything up like we absolutely by all rights should have. Yeah. But I look back and I'm thinking how in- yeah. incredibly dumb was that to, you know, make your own gunpowder, pack it into a tightly contained, you know, thinly metal object and set it and run away and hope you're not going to die about five seconds later. That seems like something that Jeff Allen would like. That's a Jeff Allen story. Like, yeah. That's a, yeah. the America I grew up. He was telling a story mm-hmm. on one of his most recent videos that he posted about how he used to go to the ice cream man and ask for dry ice because you could just get it from the ice cream man. His buddy told him if you put dry ice in a mason jar, it'll blow up. He's like, all right, cool. Where do I get dry ice? He goes to the ice cream man. So he goes to the ice cream man and he goes, hey, you got any dry ice? And the ice cream man's like, what are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to put it in a mason jar. It'll blow up. He's like, oh, that sounds cool. Here you go. Here's your dry ice. Here you go. Knock yourself out, kid. Yes, yes. This is going to be great. Enjoy yeah, it. So he says that night, his mom's picking glass out of his forehead. And his, dad, his dad goes, you, you, who told you this? He's like, my buddy Tommy down the road told me if I put dry ice and a mason jar would blow up because you knew it would happen and you just stood there and looked at it and he was like yeah <laughs> because the chances you're going to do that again he's like, probably not <laughs> you know that's how more not that exact thing lesson. yeah it's the best yeah that's it so i've i've got a story daily and i were talking about this beforehand we wanted like what were the stories growing up that like you wanted your dad to tell whenever everybody was around or, or whatever we got in trouble i don't know if you remember this or not at Paul Miles, like his 40th or 50th birthday party, right? When Paul Miles was one of dad's friends that he grew up with, and dad was always telling stories whenever we were growing up. And so we just thought that everybody he hung out with had also told their kids these awesome stories. They had not. (laughs) And so we are sitting around with the other kids, and the other kids are like, not my dad. And we're like, yeah, our dads were awesome. And they're like, my dad sucks. (laughs) It's so weird. My dad thought your dad was pretty cool back in the day. Well, so as they're leaving, right, one of the wives pulls my mom aside and was like, look, you need to tell your boys to stop telling stories because – there we have made deals all of the other wives had made deals with their husbands like you're not telling our kids what you did in high school <laughs> i think my mom probably made the same deal with my dad but it was like out the window at one point <laughs> as soon as she shut the door yeah i was on one side she was on the other <laughs> so the the story was the one that got it, us in trouble that night 
was the story of Kendall's little brother. And the mafia. Yeah, the mafia, the mafia. story. Yeah, so so please, if you, uh, if you would indulge us. We're listening. So we had a, a family that we went to school with. I went to school with them off and on through elementary. So I'm, my family, we stayed in the same area. Like growing up, my parents were basically, before I came along, they were like nomads. My brothers and sisters, they went to school in just about every state west of here. So Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Arizona, California, California, Colorado. I mean, they went to school in all these states, right? Me, Texas. Matter of fact, same school district the whole my whole life. Same school district. So there was this same brother, house, same, almost your yeah, whole life. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. We had yeah, from like age four or five on. Yeah. So we had we had uh, these two these two kids. They would be in our school district or in our elementary school classes for a year, year and a half. Then they would be gone. They were from New York, and then they would be gone back to New York. And then you know, like well, never seen. Then you know, a year or two later, they're back. And that they they went through this cycle. All the way through high school, they'd be here, back, back and forth, back and forth. So, the younger of the two, his kid's name was Robbie. He became really good friends with one of my best friends, his little brother, the two brothers, Robert and Robbie. They okay, were, that's easy to remember. <coughs> easy. They didn't go like Bob for one of them. <laughs> no, 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 oh no, no, they were Robert and Robbie. Robert and Robbie. <laughs> and so you know, being older, and you know, we 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 constantly abused them. Just, <laughs> yeah, just right, constantly right. abuse them. So um, Robbie's older sister was a very pretty girl, and apparently her boyfriend from New York had some stalker issues, and he was part of some mafia gang or you know some some he had some kind of connections with a mafia, and she had came down and they had they came down here looking for her, and the people from New York, and she was in hiding here and anyway so robert and robbie uh their parents i don't want to mention her name but their parents were out of town so robert and robbie were staying the night together at their house at Mm -hmm. the parents house so we're just sitting around bored and and then david says yeah you know we uh i don't know what do we want to do and we talked and it was around midnight we should have been going home and then he's like, you know what? My little brother's over at Robbie's house right now, and uh, they're terrified because the mafia, they're scared the mafia is going to come down and look for him. <laughs> I was like, what? And he starts giving me the backstory. And, you know, Robbie's sister, I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy, you know? And we're like, oh, man, you know, that's messed up for her, right? And then we're like, let's go terrify them. <laughs> 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 so, so they're 16 they're at their house they have no transportation uh-huh. right they're they're at the house where the mafia and is. you mentioned they're 16 so they're dumb they're, oh, yeah, oh gosh yeah. they're epically yeah. dumb they're they're like even for 16 i feel like, they were, like <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were stunted 16 year olds so, uh-huh. so we we go over to the house and uh like i said it starts at around midnight we go over to the house and there's six of us, five of us. Anyway, we get out of this. We all go over there in David's truck, single cab. Back in the day, you know, nobody had king cabs, dual cabs. This is 70s, early 80s. Single cab pickup. We're all either three of us are in the cab, whoever else is in the back. Right? Yeah. So we oh, all. I remember, well, it wasn't the 70s, it was the 80s, but mom's truck. Getting in the back. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no I should not have good. interrupted. No, for no, it's all good. Stupid <laughs> comment. <laughs> no, it's all good. So <laughs> I don't want to edit it out though. <laughs> I really, just want, just want, that's what. <laughs> just somebody want that asked, in "What's there. our show? Like, what are your sh- What's your show like?" And Will's wife was like, "It's funny and awkward." <laughs> and awkward. Yeah, it's funny and awkward. So we we go over to the house and we all pile out of the truck, and we're like, well, "What are we gonna do?" Right? And then so we just surround the house. So a few of us are more nimble than the others. So me and, me and David and uh, the, our, our buddy Paul, we all jump in the backyard. So we're going up to the windows and we're scratching on the windows and we're kind of rattling them, not really trying to get in, but just trying to. And so, but we do it all at the every side of the house. We've got somebody, we've got the house surrounded. And then, so everything's cool. Everything's great. And this one buddy of ours just gets up to the front door throws the scream door open and just starts beating on the front door and scream Roy, get out of here. <laughs> so it's midnight we're terrified it's texas right i'm i'm 
native Texan. So I'm like, oh, we're going to, somebody's going to shoot us. We're dead. <laughs> so we all freak out and just take off running. We all pile in the truck and we're rolling and we're just flying through town and going to the other side of the town. We get over to David's house and that's it. The end of the night, right? And we're like, oh man, we were laughing and carrying on and you're like, good grief. What were you thinking? Why did you go up to the door? And we, we, we always, so anyway, okay, well, let's all go home. And then we're like, God, that was too much fun. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> so you went back and got him so, again. Yeah, yeah. So that, <laughs> so that, so that you know, like I said, it's midnight. We're nights over for everybody, right? So we pile back in the truck. We head back over there. This time, we're like, let's not go to the house, right? There's an elementary school. Let's park at the elementary school. That way they don't hear us coming. They don't see the truck out front. Because the truck, the truck would if they would have looked out front, they wouldn't notice that it was that it was his truck. Because yeah. white cab, green bed. Perfect high school Texas kid truck. Because yeah. you know, he's ran over everything in town. Right. They so. get respect on the highway. <laughs> right. when you've got different colored panels. <laughs> right. like, you know what? Maybe maybe yeah. switch lanes, so, honey. So the cab yeah, the cab is white and the and the bed's green to you know green two-tone big 10 oh yeah Yeah. so anyway so we park at the elementary school and it's about a hundred yard walk right so we're walking over there like okay everybody be cool (laughs) nobody lose their joke we're talking to one friend in particular like dude i don't know what you were doing last time but don't do that again let's (laughs) really (laughs) let's really try and freak them out so we go into the backyard you know we (laughs) it's it's subtlety it's yeah that really gets to people right (laughs) screaming (laughs) does get an effect but you can really mess them up with subtlety subtlety. yes Yes. so we were really trying to go in and make them think that we're trying to break in the house right and you know that they're people not a bang but a a a a pick picking a lock so yeah and that there's not a part of the house that they can go into where somebody's not trying to get in that room <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so, so terror was the main objective <laughs> and we were successful at it and even the yeah. first time we were successful at it. so second time around we're there we're all at the house so we've got it surrounded again it sounds <clears> like <throat> you taught them a lesson for whatever oh, yeah. well, you were just, trying oh, to just, <laughs> just the just lessons wait. just keep on going <laughs> so, just keep on going so so we go through everybody everybody's practicing subtlety we're all in the backyard. We're being quiet, and then, and then psychological I, warfare. And mm-hmm. then I see this one buddy of ours, and he's flying across the backyard. I'm like, wow, where's he going? <laughs> <laughs> Not thinking I should be going with that guy. <laughs> thinking, what's he running from? <laughs> <laughs> that I should also run from. He looks, he looks extraordinarily <laughs> petrified right now. <laughs> Why am I not joining him? <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, so I'm still doing my thing. And then uh, I see another guy. Boom, he's gone. Ready to, and this guy gets to the fence, doesn't, jumps it. It's a little four foot cyclone, cyclone fence. I don't know that he could, he said he didn't know he could jump it. He was nervous. He cleared it, no problem. All right, so that much adrenaline's happening. Two, two are gone, yeah. right? And I'm like, well, that's weird. And then this other buddy who had been beating on the door, earlier this guy right he runs by me he's like he's, he's a big guy yeah, he's a big guy he runs by me and just slaps me on the shoulder uh, 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 and he doesn't stop he's just chugging <laughs> and he's a uh, 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 a man <laughs> I'm like, and i'm like what and I look and the next door neighbor is standing out there in his underwear right <laughs> he's leading on the fence he goes what are y'all doing? <laughs> and I'm like, oh we're man, being, we're yeah. being mafia. <laughs> no, I'm like, we're being mafia. <laughs> I didn't, exactly. I didn't say anything. I was just like, I'm out. So, so I took off running. I clear the fence. Well, my buddy who tapped me, right? He's he's a bigger guy, mm-hmm. and he's not nearly as fast as I was. So I get to the fence. I don't even think about touching it. I jump over the fence. I'm gone. As I'm clearing the fence, he that, like, <laughs> that, that is the law of the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. When you're the mafia, this is how you do it. Every man for himself. <laughs> so, so I clear the fence, and as we get to the fence, he's just like, he's looking at me, and I'm like, I'm like, fence, you know? <laughs> and I'm in midair. I'm in midair, and he just eats it. <laughs> just <laughs> runs straight into the fence, falls over on his back, you know, and I'm just I'm still going. So we look back and they're like, where's, where's, where's the other guy? I'm like, 
He's dead. He, he, <laughs> so they he got hit, him. He, hit the, <laughs> he ran into the fence, and we're about we're you know we're almost we're halfway to the truck, and we've kind of we're kind of walking now. We turn back and look, and he's just walking. He's still in the backyard. <laughs> he, just, he just he just walks from one side of the yard to the other, opens the gate, <laughs> lets himself out, and takes off. So we're like, we all get to back together, and we're like, oh, we're laughing. We're you know we're hilarious, and you know, we've entertained ourselves all night. Well, then my buddy Dave calls me the next morning at about nine o'clock. He goes, man, will you talk to my brother? I'm like, sure. He goes, he goes, he goes. You're not gonna believe it, dude. They, yeah. You're not gonna believe it. They really thought it was the mafia. I was like, oh, I believe that part. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, they called the cops. I'm like, oh my god, I don't believe that. You know, so I never thought about them calling the cops. So they called the cops. I'm trying to convince Robert and Robbie that it was us, and they're like, dude, there's no way it was y'all. It was the mafia. We were so terrified the mafia was here, and I explained everything that happened. He goes. No, 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 because I told the cops when they got there, I said, look, I know that they were driving a Chevy pickup with a six cylinder motor in it because it sounded exactly like my brother's truck. <laughs> <laughs> Back to maybe not the brightest two 16 year olds ever. <laughs> I'm like, sounded and looked like <laughs> my brother. Like you just said, it just, you just said it sounded. You know, so we were in the front yard and we drove up the second time we parked at the elementary school so you wouldn't hear us. And then it started clicking with him. So then he just hangs up, he just throws the phone down and david gets on the phone he goes dude let me tell you what they did so they called the cops they're crawling around inside the house both of them they were in the bed they're crawling around on the bellies inside the house <laughs> serpentining <laughs> through the house <laughs> trying to figure out how to defend themselves totally terrified because somebody's in every room they can't go into a room where somebody's they're in here they're in there they're in here they're crying right? <laughs> <laughs> they had called the cops the cops show up the as soon as the cop car pulls up in front of the house this is after we'd been there the second time right uh -huh. the cop car pulls up in front of the house they take off running outside robert's the first one to the cop car and he goes he's like oh my god and he turns around and runs back in the house and Robbie's running toward the cop car. He goes, no, 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 no. And he's like, and Robbie's looking at him, and they're both running. To, and it was two female cops. <laughs> 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 they're girls. They ran outside in their whitey tighties to two, two female, female cops. officers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and when there's been the female officers, they said that the two female officers were just about to die laughing. They could not compose themselves. <laughs> the <mafia's here. laughs> They're so, not. So anyway. Sounds so, yeah. like it might have been your brother. You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it was pretty. It was that was a fun night. That, yeah. that is hysterical. So that's the story that we weren't allowed to tell the other kids that we were so excited to tell them because we'd heard this story so many times. And we're like, and your dad did this, and your dad did this, and these other kids are like. Our dad didn't do Their that. dad was the one, the Our wild dad man. Is lame. Their yeah. dad he just was watches the, ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Their dad was the wild man who he went to the to front cool. door and tried to beat the door down. Yeah, Sweet. that that's was a dad. great short story. Yeah, yeah it was, oh, his, so, his mom or his wife. Their mom was living. Oh, she was losing <laughs> she her was mind. So bad. <laughs> she pulled my mom aside and was like, "You." <laughs> And we're like, what is wrong? And those with kids that had lady? no idea that their dad was an absolute <laughs> wild man. Like he was in everything we did. He was the wild card. Uh -huh. I mean, everything we did. He was like, okay, we got this. We got this. And we'd look at him and be like, okay, everybody else, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing we could count on is we couldn't count on him to do. And it was, it was what was great about being around him. It was fun. I also had a wild card in my crew. Dan Lee. I uh, know, but. I'm not going to say, but this person may have lit off fireworks in Walmart. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about now. Yeah. You also know who I'm talking about. But, yeah. I, but there's you, a short list of you possibilities. May have, you may have some names going through yeah. your head. One yeah. of them, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in that Rolodex, stop it, Jay. Yeah. And you're going <laughs> to... You're, uh, you're getting warm. <laughs> you're getting warm if you're there. So, so when we were talking about uh, stories that our dads told... Mm -hmm. I thought of the the telemarketer story with oh, with gosh. Papa. Do you, do you remember? Yeah, yeah. There's several, but do you remember the details of those? My father. That's a yes. 
<laughs> was certifiably insane. We'll start there. <laughs> in, in a very, in a very charming way, um, and he reveled in the idea that he could just mess with anyone who called up on a, you know, any kind of a phone solicitor. Right. He took it as his God-given right to mess with them for as long as he could drag out the conversation. You know? Okay. Um, when I think of, let's see, uh, he had, uh, who, who was the, who was the, there was the carpet guy. There was the, no, the dance instructor, uh, Arthur, <laughs> Arthur, Arthur, Murray. Arthur, Murray. Arthur Murray, Arthur Murray, Arthur Murray, a, a reference that neither of you guys would know. No. Uh, they were at that point, a big chain of dance studios. You could go learn to ballroom, ballroom dance. dance. Oh yeah. Uh, and there was, they were selling, you know, lessons at, the, at the Arthur Stewart. Um, and he had this guy going for a while that, you know, that my dad, you know, had, 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 you know, he had no legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yet really wanted to learn how to dance, <laughs> you know, and was so really interested in how they could accommodate that. I mean, and he did, he okay, just there's, tooled there's this Arthur guy. Murray oh, for our very audience. Nice. Behind you. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's if, if you can't there you Absolutely. go. Well, well, well played. No, he did nicely done. <laughs> everything well is him. <laughs> yeah, so everything root beer so is me. He had he had this <laughs> poor guy going for at least played. 10 15 minutes about how you know, this guy was going to try to help this guy who had no legs learn how to ballroom dance, you know, which is a you know wildly wonderful of the salesperson, but but incredibly funny at the time when when my dad did it. Um, he also what was it, the carpet, I guess. There was Actually, the there was the funeral plot. Or the uh, I don't remember the, the burial plot. plots. You you may have heard this one. So well, they they called to ask about you know purchasing your, for, yes. your forever home. Yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. forever yeah. <laughs> your forever yeah. home. Um, and yeah, it was a funeral plot salesman offering up this great deal of be able to you know you know have a forever place for for you and your and your lovely bride and your children. And he had the guy convinced that you know that we buried all of our family out in the backyard. <laughs> You know, and Aunt Myrtle and Uncle yeah, yeah. Jim were already there. In fact, know. we just Fantastic. put Aunt uh, Jenny in last week. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> uh, carpet salesman. I kind of stole this one from him, but he had the carpet salesman guy call one time, and he convinced them that, that we, they had taken all the carpet out of the house and replaced it with sand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is extremely original. I mean, I mean just, just great. My, my favorite detail to that was that he asked him if they also sold rakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was genius. Oh, he was, he was, he was, he was great. He was genius. Great. He was. Speaking That's of fantastic. which. fantastic. Yeah. So uh, I need one more story. Is this a song? <laughs> no, this is not old Kate Smith. <laughs> okay, because we need old Kate Smith also. Okay. Well, we can. Uh, we'll, we'll do that after. Let, old Kate yeah, yeah. Smith is uh, in terms of a storytelling old Kate Smith is on the way up to a climax okay <laughs> so old Kate Smith would be good okay so Kate Smith was a, a singer famous singer I don't know when you would mm, know 40s do you, do you remember Kate Smith or do you have you heard of the name mm -mm, I've probably heard well, of the music. my grandfather was obsessed with this lady <laughs> her, 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 her big hit was God Bless America like in the 40s or something like that okay. so that's right. kind of the era right? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he made up a song. I don't really want to get into this. <laughs> Actually, you kind of kicked too late. Yeah, you yeah. started kicking this can down the road. You kind of have to go there. This now. is you are well, the reprobate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but now it's gonna be all fat shaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's there's no sa there's no saving this story, but it's still funny. Yeah. So so he wrote he wrote it. Do you know what the tune that is? Is it like a? Uh, I mean, it's, I don't think he made the tune up. He made, he added lyrics to a famous tune. Yeah, I forgot what it was now. Old Kate Smith was a big, big fat, fat lady. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Started out as, as a big, big fat, fat baby. baby. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then he'd make up. Yeah, and then the rest year. of the song, the the da 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 da. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She couldn't oh, see yeah. her toes because of those and those and those. <laughs> there were there were seven thousand verses written to that song yeah. over, over the over the family years. I mean, it became a an Olympic sport within the family nice. to, to write old Kate Smith verses. Three generations, <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, of writing which, old which Kate is, Smith I mean, lyrics. It, 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 there's there's nothing defendable about it from a fat shaving standpoint, <laughs> but it's just it, it is glorious from a family history standpoint. Yeah, I mean, yes. yeah, it's just yeah. so those much fun. Some of my so favorite memories. Of Papa are sitting at Luby's and singing lyrics to him to see if he would laugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most yes. of the time he would because he was like, "This is great that my grandson's writing lyrics about 
on how, how big in she the 40s. is. Well, <laughs> she's going to need more of a zip code. She's going to be her own. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I can't remember any of them. But, you know. But I mean, when when I first got my first Pro Tools recording set up at home. Yeah. You know, I mean, I got it for Christmas, you know, whatever that was, you know, a long time yeah. ago. The very first song that I recorded was yeah. me playing all the parts and doing Old Kate Smith with four part harmony. And I played, I was so, I was so ready to play it for my dad, you know, because. How old it, were you? I, yeah, I was an adult, but I mean, it, it was, it was whatever it was, it was 10, 15 years ago or right. 20 years ago or, or 30 years ago or, or 40 years ago. It's um, so great. But yeah, I mean, that that was the level of, of import it was from a cultural standpoint in the family. Is, is That's awesome. I got a new O.K. Smith song or O.K. Smith beers. I'm just waiting to kind of drop it on everyone when the next time we have a, <laughs> so another <great>. competition. <laughs> There's new bars of O.K. Smith, yo. <laughs> I've got these tucked away. I cannot wait to drop this on the fam. <laughs> Kale's gonna put a Kale's gonna put a drum beat to it. <laughs> yeah, it could. It's so fantastic. Kale Gibson and Travis so we Scott have this, present we, Old we have, so, Smith. We have this thing. It's not nearly at that level, but my yeah. mom, my mom did this thing for my my brothers and sisters. The first three, there's five of us total, but the first three are you know close to twenty years older than me. Yeah, and so. I have nieces and nephews that are almost the same age I am. So I was, I You're was like a, three years older than yeah. your closest niece I, or nephew. I was right? an uncle at three. So, but my mom uncle did this thing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so my mom did this thing um, where she would get up in the mornings and sing good morning to you. It was so terrible. It's the most heinous thing you've ever heard <laughs> in your life. So I, so the first time I, I saw all in the family and Edith Bunker is there at the piano and she starts singing. I'm like, they stole this from my mom. <laughs> this idea, because this, this level of screeching and just heinous, never even finding a key, can, has to be intentional or it has to be my mom doing good morning to you. Yeah. And it's the only thing I've ever heard her sing in my life. But she was, you know, and it was heinous. But everybody, so now we are three four generations yeah into the family now Still and singing it. yeah everybody ev everybody everybody and like one there's one person in each I, generation that gets grandmother's singing voice and it's always <laughs> yeah it's always like one of our it's she's just she's a beautiful young girl uh -huh. and then she goes to sing and you're like oh you're the <laughs> how, so, is it, how is it possible you're actually trying to do that yeah, so my, she, she sings like the seagull from little mermaid yes <laughs> yes so it's so my cousin that just got married uh -huh. we were talking about the song right and her husband was like oh i've never heard about this song and then my other cousin who's there with us she was and she's talking to her husband he's like yeah uh, I thought this song was like a myth. And everybody at the table were like, no, it's not. My cousin on her wedding day is like, oh, yeah. Grandmother used to sing, good morning to you. Yeah. And everybody, all the rest of the cousins at the tables, we just looked at each other. And we're like, she's got grandmother's voice. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's it. And now I think the next one that's going to have it is going to be. Yeah, it's going to be it's Eleanor Thomas's. Ellie. Yeah, yeah Thomas. She's two. I heard her sing. So she loves Frozen. And we started to sing Let It Go. We were like, let it go, let it go. And cursed it. My wife starts singing. She's got this beautiful singing voice. And then we stopped because we heard Eleanor go, let it go. <laughs> like she sounds, she, she sounds like she's breathing and singing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, don't you don't make any more. <laughs> so, she's too. So it's so bad. fantastic, oh. though. You just want to, you just, you stop everything you're doing so that you can hear her. And then she yeah. looks at you like, what? What, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah, like sing. Yeah. You know, and then she'll oh, quit. Man. But oh it's 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 amazing. Yeah, it's like somebody <laughs> forgot to it... cover up the trach hole and just let <laughs> just let her go at it. <laughs> it really is. It really is. <laughs> All right. I think this is the last story that I'll ask for, but okay. I don't know that you've actually told me this as much as I've heard it from other people of this story that happened to you as a new tradition. That you didn't. That you. <laughs> I know where this that, is going. That you, oh, thankfully, did not pass on. This has to do with deer hunting. It, it is the uh, deer butthole story. <laughs> and this this may get <laughs> and cut. And, and that's not a letter. It's not, that's not deer butthole. <laughs> uh, Comma. Uh, how yeah. dare you? <laughs> as as I had the story told to me by my father, who I again refer to the fact is, is this, certifiably insane. And is this a true story or is this a Oh, this happened to Gary at least, my brother. Okay, okay. I know okay. it happened at least okay. once. And it may be the only time just because it, it it was the opportunity my dad had to do this. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, uh, again, the certifiably insane father of mine, grandfather of him. Hysterical. Gosh, legend. <laughs> yeah, the, the myth, the legend. Yeah. Um, we used to go deer hunting down in South Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, as, I, as I understand it, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I was even on this hunt. I was probably too young. Uh, but Gary, my older brother, by about uh, five years, you know, was, was deer hunting, and, and he got his first deer. And my father set it up as it will. Well, of course, it's a it's a ancient you know hunter's <laughs> tradition um, that. What well, actually? I, let, me, let me tell the story a different way. So they're they're gutting the deer as you do. Right. You field dress the deer. You're, yeah. You cut everything out, and and you have to kind of cut around you know the south end of the northbound deer. Right. And he often kind of just pop it loose. Well, when he popped it loose, it hit Gary right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm told was not there, <laughs> right? But but he got a you know he got a schnoz full of a, of the of the deer butthole, uh, um, and my dad you know at that probably at that point defended the accident as well. No, that's really a, a time honored tradition. That, that makes more sense. That, yeah, that because you know, the myth is that he took it and rubbed it. Under, you know, right across the face and said, "You're a man now." Yeah, you're, well, you know, that's probably. Is, what, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's I'm sure probably, that's the story he told. That's after how, yes. that's how the story was built yeah. up. Yeah, that makes a lot yeah. more sense. But uh, but the, but the time honored tradition was that that you know when you when you have your first kill, you know the the time honored tradition is you have to you know have the the anus of the uh, of, of, of the fallen <laughs> <laughs> rubbed across your face. <laughs> I'm glad that and wasn't David's deal with Saul when he was going to collect all the foreskins. And I think we have a title for this episode. <laughs> the anus of the fallen. Yeah. <laughs> the reverend, the reprobate, and their dads. Oh, my gosh. Hey, uh, do you guys want to hear a story about Michael Jackson? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, Colton, do your trick. <laughs> I mean, we got to find another way to say that. <laughs> I like this way. I don't like you telling I'm... me to do my trick. <laughs> I'm in, I'm interested. Okay. Scott, you'll really like this one. I just want to hear you laugh because it makes me smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I worked with a guy um, at this church I worked for before I came here, and he was on tour with Michael Jackson. Um, and this was the first time that they were shooting people up from the stage. So, so like rocketing, yeah. Them. yeah like had him in wasn't, a okay. This wasn't camera <laughs> angles shooting yeah. them up. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nor was it like a drug dealer that's kind of like shooting <laughs> them up. Yeah. Yeah. So we, have, we, we all have our terms. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 not this guy. Yeah, not yeah. this guy. Yeah, not yeah. that. I, I can't find a vein, buddy. Yeah. Shooting him up into the air from the bottom of the stage. Yep. Okay. So they load him up and they're trying. They're trying to find somebody that's the same size as Michael so that they can test it because they're scared to put Michael in it for the first time. They're having a hard time finding somebody, and, and Michael's like, it's okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely so, done. Well, yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Now I know why says do your trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they drop Michael into the trap. Well, he gets into the into the stage, and they shoot him up into the air. Well, he flies up and hits the lighting trust in the ceiling <laughs> and falls back down and hits the ground. <laughs> so everybody in the room goes silent because they're all either thinking we, we killed, killed Michael him. Jackson <laughs> or we all don't have jobs and now we have to figure out how to pay rent. Well, in the silence, you hear Michael say, I think that was a little too high. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and that's Colton's Michael Jackson story. And that's nice. my trick. Nice. Nice. Where's my treat? Yeah. <laughs> well done, Colton. <laughs> okay. Uh... Thank you, Colton. You're welcome. Yes, thank, thank you, Colton. <laughs> We're gonna have story and time with Colton, and it's always gonna be the same story. Yeah, We're just gonna see time. how our guests yeah. react. And for <laughs> our next yeah. bit, please rank your children in terms of numerical order. Yes. Um. On, on what value? Born first. Yeah. Oh, well, that would be Dan. Oh, easy. hey, easy. Dan, Dan, you're first on <laughs> his side. Who's, uh, who's first on your side? <laughs> oh, um, that'd have to be Lucas. Yeah, we win. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Sorry, other siblings. Scoreboard. Yeah, which, the other five which, of you did not quite make the cut as being the firstborn. <laughs> since, <laughs> since, since both of our sisters are married, which one of our sister's boyfriends did you hate the most? Oh, yeah. 
And you don't have to answer this. If you <laughs> want to. Well, like, I know, I know which one I hated the most. Basketball head. Oh yeah. <laughs> basketball head. It was either basketball head or it was Bert. And we don't have any risk now. Austin listens oh, to the podcast, but he's heard all Bert. these stories. Kelsey doesn't care about anything that I do. If I'm mm-hmm. doing it, she immediately assumes it's not worth <laughs> listening or paying attention to. So no risk here. S- same with my sister. Yeah. <laughs> I, I so, love I love you, Julia. Uh, you're not watching anyway. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> something. Yeah, she's right. she's much never too hear bougie that. to listen to podcasts. <laughs> so we'll never hear that. Did, I think Danley had the same experience that I did when we talked about, hey, we're gonna have the moms on. Everybody's like, oh, great, yeah, have mom on. That'll be really sweet. When we said we're gonna have our dads on, both of our sisters, I think, were like, listen. Don't do anything to embarrass dad. <laughs> don't say anything to make dad look bad. Yeah, dad has a threats. job. That, yeah, we get this whole like talking to. You got that too? About, yeah. Because I heard that. I mean, I, I, both both of yeah. you know, the, the other brother and sister yeah. and I was laid like, down guys, the I'm law gonna to have, him. I'm going to have Reese's and bullets. <laughs> yeah, like, what do you think we're going to do? You think we're, <laughs> that we're like gotcha journalism that, in that, our dad? That, that means we did a good job with our daughters. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's very protective. She, she like, absolutely just laid down the law to him. I was like, That's do fantastic. not do this. Do not do that. Don't bring up. Blank. <laughs> and I have you not. Know, what I'm makes not you think that that's it. what we're going to do? Sweet. Like That's really going to get us ratings. <laughs> <laughs> watch, the, watch the reverend and the rubber bait cancel their dad. He got his father <laughs> fired. Yeah. Yeah. Was, well, I really got so my good. big break when I screwed over my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, by the way, he lives with me now. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Nobody wants that to happen. Super awesome. <laughs> Nobody wants yeah, that. Yeah, like, what the heck? Um, oh yeah, if you get me fired, okay. I'm moving in. So, so, so we'll, we'll skip the sister boyfriend because they probably yeah. wouldn't they wouldn't but, like that. But, but they Bert don't and it. basketball head do have to be yeah. in two. That you you know what? Yeah. Uh, never mind. So so instead of that, uh-huh. which of our friends did you dislike the most, and why was it Jared and Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> They also don't listen to the yeah, show, yeah, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's it. Danley originally wanted to do this podcast with Jared, but after months of not getting returned calls, he was like, "He settled for you." Heather, so. call Lucas and see if he's got a schedule. It's, uh, it's not, not true. Yeah. Have they still owe me money? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, true. probably. Yeah. Well, 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 there you go. Easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you remember? Yeah, no, I'm just I'm gonna. They owe Greg money. That's they why owe Greg money. <laughs> yeah. so, That's why. so Jared, I don't know if you remember this. Jared got a tattoo on I, his. You know what? I had to spend a lot of time <laughs> saving Jared's life. <laughs> okay. so, so Jared has no idea what he owes me. But, <laughs> but I had to call the dogs off Jared many, many times. Uh-huh. Nearly physical restraints involved. You, like, s- you stopped just at the ledge. <laughs> right. Yeah. Jared, Jared got a tattoo on his. And, he just and then I stopped, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because I knew. The, yeah. the res- like if I kept going yeah. it's going to get a response at some point yeah. I found it oh no no I knew where you were going and uh-huh. that's why I was like I'll just head this up <laughs> <laughs> I saved Jared's life multiple this, this multiple was actually occasions. this Can is actually the conversation because I'm curious was so, it was it keeping angry mothers away from him no, no okay no, no, no. then was, I don't know what you're talking about it was angry it, brothers yeah uh, who, oh. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that well, was it Jared does he really he got this tattoo and he he got it on his waistline. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he started the showing wings. it. He yeah. started showing it to my wife. Mm-hmm. And bad call. <laughs> in front in front of in front of the two brothers. Mm-hmm. And oh. And oh yeah. <laughs> bad yeah. call. So he started more judgment. Ways to make sure that I can get killed. <laughs> show show Let's happy see. trail to friends what? mom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start. Let's start with Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> Bad move. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I saved his life on many occasions. Yeah, he, he has uh, no he idea. He started to edge down the top of his basketball like, shorts oh, no, to no, show no. it, and Mom went, "Oh!" and covered her eyes. And both of my brothers stepped forward. They and materialized. Dad, Dad <laughs> grabbed the boys, and I chucked Jared out of the door. <laughs> and then both of my brothers were on me, and they're like, "I can't believe you almost let him do that." It's like I did not know what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was gonna flash Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, don't worry, the tattoo's not as didn't. low as it seemed. And yeah, yeah. yeah. and he didn't. Nope. But, no, but he the, didn't. The, the optics of it from where everyone 
was standing just bad would just it was terrible but that was <laughs> yeah. that I, was I, pretty I, typical of yeah. a uh, of but an jared, evening with jared but, <laughs> yeah but jared he was like hey jared would you any oh yeah okay. yeah <laughs> he's a great kid yeah, yeah he's a great guy he's, really, he's a he's grown really, man yeah, i love jared as long as you're not trying to start a podcast with him which is a which is a lie by the way he keeps perpetuating this lie because it's funny but yeah no, I mean whatever. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the reverend pretty soon. <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> Heresy. <laughs> what video system, video game system, came out that you that each of you were like, nah, I'm too. Yeah. When did you realize um, you were me? done with video? Yeah, because you've never really All liked of video them. games. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was I was uh, hooked when they first came out. Like mm-hmm. we had the first Atari. The Intellivision. Then we had the Intellivision. And Which, uh, you had the plug, first television? Plug for, uh, Intellivision. Plug for Doug Tenable. Yeah, the new Intellivision <laughs> is coming out with Earthworm Jim 4 that Doug uh, Tenable is developing. I would that. obliterate everyone I knew at Intellivision. <laughs> 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 it, wasn't even, it wasn't even a competition. It was, it was, it was terrible. One guy I beat so bad, my, brother was, my, my brother's like, why, why is he doing? What's, what's he doing? I said, he's running into those things. It was a skiing game. And he goes, yeah, but why? Why? You have to miss those. He's telling the guy, dude, you have to miss those things. And he goes, well, he told me to run into him. I said, no. I, like, <laughs> I said, no. I said, no, I told you to miss them. And I told you to miss them. And I told you to miss them. You just are really good at running into them. So I was like, just run into them. <laughs> didn't look like you were trying to miss any of them. So I was just like. There you so, go. so, so which system eventually are you? Oh, are for you, sure. Are you still for me? I think that you maybe. Um, I, you know what the the kids got me. Uh, what's the the three sixty? Well, the three hundred and sixty, but the the Wii. No, the thing where I enjoyed the Wii. Yeah. The Switch? thing where we had the, the uh, probably the sixty four PlayStation. No, the sixty four. <laughs> the Nintendo sixty four. We got this the, the sixty four. I was like, you know what. That was like in ninety eight or yeah, something. I, yeah, I was, was like, pretty old. I, the, I, the I year my wife was born. Yeah, I, was like, I don't. I really yeah, we don't were have both time. Playing Golden Eye. Yeah, yeah, I don't have time to to really was get Spanish good at any of this. It was a TV for uh, whatever. Yeah, what I, didn't the have, I didn't have yeah. time to get to play it as much as they did to get good at it, and yeah. I I was done. I didn't really care to. I still had friends that were like so into all this mm-hmm. stuff, and I was I just didn't care to anymore. And you, you um, did, that's I played with them. I did play with the kids. I always did play with the kids. Because it was fun, you know, and, and listening to them squabble and stuff. And I just loved it. My daughter, I, I remember playing. She was really young. I remember playing with her and um, we, Goldeneye. Yeah. And it was some great memories playing Goldeneye. Because she goes, well, I'm looking for this weapon. Do you have it? No, I don't have it. Who's got it? And somebody's already got it. And it's gone. And I don't know what gun they're looking for. But this gun's it always gone. Gun. Yeah. 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 Totally. And, it, and, and no one has for. it. No one has it. But it's not there. So yeah. somebody has it, right? Mm-hmm. And then my daughter, who would just run around and snipe everybody, or just run around and and get and then, killed by brothers, right? And then, but then yeah. somebody would she'd be like, "Don't shoot me! Don't shoot me! I'm not shooting anybody." Yeah, you know? I don't have any guns. And that's then, what she would say. Right. She'd be and then running around with open her. hands. Then you would sh- <laughs> <laughs> you would shoot her, and it would look like the table there, you know, just just an explosion. The whole screen would be covered with a thousand weapons. You know? Yeah, she had all the golden all the, guns, yeah. like was dual wielding everything, everything yeah. and she would like as soon as you'd get close. She'd like, look, I don't have any guns. And you'd turn, yeah, you'd run off and she would just shoot you in the back. Right. Or, oh, it, but every great. time you shot her, you know, it was just like, yeah. it's just an explosion of weapons. Yeah, you so played uh, you played the 360 with us a little bit. Whenever I it, first got back from Canada, you, we played got Borderlands. Me, the boys got me a, uh, um, what's the, the online membership for the? Xbox Live. Yeah, Xbox yeah. Live. They got, they got that for me. So one of my sons was away in college station and you know another no one was living at home so i got on there a few times xbox live and you know was completely abused by people online yeah and, but we <laughs> we played borderlands whenever i was in canada borderlands is a fantastic it was fun. Yeah. i enjoyed borderlands so but yeah. all four of us on tuesday nights would get on so i'd be playing from canada dad would be playing it at home thomas was close by and then matt mm-hmm. was in college station and that was the way that we all would yeah. would hang out as we'd get on and talk crap about each other on borderlands <laughs> and, and then, then the like chipmunk crews would go on and, there you know these yeah. Just, just a obli- you know, these yeah. ten year old, six year twelve year olds, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> just that was my experience with paintball. That's why I stopped playing. I played for a long time growing up, yeah, and then took a long hiatus, and then got some new gear and went out to go play. And there were eight year olds with automatic paintball guns. <laughs> yeah. 
And I played one game, and it was 110 degrees out, <laughs> getting shot at by children. And I was like, nope, I'm out. Yeah. This is not funny. I just, took, I just took an L on that investment yeah. of the paintball gun. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Well, um, nearing the end of our episode, we always go into a, a segment we refer to as controlled rowdiness, named mm-hmm. after our, our good friend Stephen Mansfield. And so we want to put our dads through our paces. We're going to do this the same way that we deal with the mom. So if uh, if I ask a question, Dad, you have to answer first, and then Greg, you have to to answer, and then Danley will uh, will ask the next question. The first question on tonight's docket for controlled rowdiness is: What toy did we have that you wish? you could have obliterated while we were growing up? <laughs> uh, probably the first Nintendo. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The original the, NES? The original NES, yeah, that one. Because it would, no, no, no. The one, where are the ones that you did you have to save? When did you ha- start having to 64, save? 64, Nintendo 64. 64. Mm-hmm. That, that was my favorite. Time. Because okay, we'd so be, <laughs> we, would be, we would be getting ready to go somewhere. You need to, Let's go. And then, oh, I, I can't go right now. I've got to save the game. I'm like, okay, we'll save the game. I can't save it from here. I have to get to whatever. 20 minutes later, like, I can't save it yet. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Unplug. I'm yeah. about to sledgehammer this thing. <laughs> the, the, Nintendo 64, the Nintendo 64 caused a rule in our house known as the wheel chalk rule. Yes, indeed. Uh-huh. Which, is, which is where if we fought over a game, my dad would. Now, our driveway was on this really horrible, like, incline. And so if we fought over a game, what would happen is he would take the game and he would push it under the rear tire of the Suburban and then put the tire or put the Suburban in neutral. And if the game could keep the Suburban up for 10 seconds, then we could keep it. <laughs> but if it couldn't, then we lost the game. <laughs> and so we were like, no, he's not going to really do it. Blah, blah blah. We were fighting over Clay Fighters 63 and a third. Mm. And he took it out of the console while the console was still on, right? Taylor, that's a no-no. Yeah, that's a no-no. Yeah, there's strike number one. Yeah, yeah. he took it out, then pulled, just walked right outside, didn't say a word, took a t- took the game, put it underneath the tire, and took a little hammer, and went tink tink, tink <laughs> and hammered it underneath it. And we were just all like, "What are you?" And he goes, "Do you want to rethink anything before we start?" <laughs> yes. So we begged for forgiveness. We got grounded for a week each, and we were happy to do so. Yeah. But we never fought over anything. I don't remember penance. ever actually having to carry it out. But that sounds very authentic. Yeah. <laughs> about the way that I would have yep, done it. I so. might steal it. <laughs> no, it's a great. Al- although now all games are downloaded digitally. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm not Just take sure. the hard drive. Or, or take the hard drive. You know, or the controller. Yeah, those are expensive. Controllers though. are not easy to come by. That's yeah. true. That's true. It's not a bad dad move to have a little threat, as long as you're willing to. As long as they think you're crazy enough to back it up, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> so and we did. That, we were convinced. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Greg, what what toy of Danley's did you want to obliterate while he was growing up? It's probably somewhat apocryphal here at the table because everyone else is such a video game fanatic apparently but to me it was video like it was games. kind of all the video games but especially mm-hmm. it wasn't even the specific video game as much as just the concept of the video games because i would come in and everyone would be on the video game and there would be uh, an ethernet cable connected <laughs> to the to the video game and going out the door <laughs> and out the backyard and over the fence <laughs> and into the next house neighborhood play. and, and up. that's how you got to play with kyle yeah, yeah. and kyle was on the Good other job, end of it in there. Mm-hmm. and that cable would be there like you know for for a month at a time connected to the Playing, house uh, I was like, I I was battle, gotta get rid of this battlefield thing. and halo yeah halo for sure yeah because you could have the land parties with halo mm-hmm. you know kyle it, has been it, but, like it's been <laughs> nine months it. since kyle's been on the show because he has had the massive quantums just the worst bad bathroom that there has mm-hmm. ever been so oh, hashtag oh, continue, oh, continue, oh, continue wow. to pay for pray for kyle <laughs> kyle you're welcome for sorry. making that public yeah. sorry kyle <laughs> okay sorry for you were you ever worried I was going to end up gay? <laughs> <laughs> and yes. For the, uh, <laughs> no, I, I no, 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 no. no. I, I, I had other worries, but that was not one of them. No, I was just testosterone fueled <laughs> right out the gate. <laughs> Just super yeah, manly. Yeah, was never on the list. Yeah. And also, we're not uh, we're not haters. Okay, 
No, I'm just kidding. That's it. That's it. So, I hate. I hate everybody. <laughs> yeah, I Equally. Say, yeah. Okay. Equally. Seriously. Uh, no. Well, Scott's got to answer. Oh, yeah, the question. I have to answer that one. Yeah. Did oh, you okay. ever think Dan Lee was going to end up gay? I did for a long time. <laughs> he was, was obsessed was with. Ar- he was obsessed with Jared's tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> this is really disturbing. <laughs> I love those wings. <laughs> no. So. Uh, yeah. Lucas's mom. Lucas's mom and I would discuss this, right? Mm-hmm. And, and what is wrong with this girl? Well, these girls would be throwing themselves in this direction. I'd be like, what's wrong with her? And Amy would go, I don't know. I mean, she seems okay. And Lucas would just be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, no, no, not but really. But I, I mean, always no. could articulate what was wrong with <laughs> them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which was the problem. <laughs> yeah. So would, yeah, so no, no. What, what really. was wrong with them? So it, it would depend, right? So I was very particular. Okay, so wait. Mental. <laughs> okay. Completely mental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Daily, daily knows there's actually there's a uh-huh. lady in there's a lady in our church that will do this, right? Because there was a, a girl that I, that I I was thinking about dating, and I was like I can't do it, and she's like why? And I was like her her face isn't symmetrical. <laughs> she was like what? And I was like she looks great from either profile, but her jaw is just a little mm-hmm. on edge, and she so she. <laughs> she did that, and the first time that she saw Kirsten, the same lady goes, well, what do you think about her? Her face is pretty symmetrical. And I looked at her, and I was like, yeah, we were already dating. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, well done. Well done. Yeah, so it was pretty much when Kirsten walked in and, like, accepted any of his advances. I was like, okay, if she sticks around, it's game over. Yeah. Yeah, there's and, no doubt. And she did. She did. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. I approve. Uh, well, that's yeah. that's what we were all hoping for. Is once Dan Lee's stamp of approval, and actually Greg got to meet her and hang out with her a little bit this weekend. Um, on uh, on Sunday night, yep. we went over for uh, for dinner with May May. A mass birthday party. It was. It was mm-hmm. huge birthday party. Awesome. She also got to meet the uh, the beaches and Granny and Granny mm-hmm. <laughs> and Calvin. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So the the beaches, the Ivers. Uh, Granny was really the winner in all of that. Yeah. She yeah. usually is. Yeah, getting to meet Granny was probably the highlight of of Kirsten's. T- t- tell them about uh with Chris and Granny because I think that really highlights Granny's. Okay, essence. yeah. So so Chris, who is uh, your Gert new brother in law, mm-hmm. um, we talked about on the Mama Sewed. We talked a little bit about this wedding and how that was like your mom's proudest moment was when you took up for, her, and this was leading up to this wedding, right? Yep. So Chris introduces me to Granny. He's like, "Hey, Granny, this is Lucas." And uh, Granny goes, I know who Lucas is. I've been his granny since he was a little boy. She gives me a big, big hug. He's like, okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. And she goes, I realized that, Chris. Like, oh, I don't know what just happened Chris. right now. And Dan Lee's looking at me and he's like, hey, come over here. <laughs> yeah, I want to get out of get out of line of fire here. 100% Granny. Yeah, that is yeah granny. definitely. Perfect. To, to the T. Um, what car that you have driven? Do you wish you had back? Oh, that's easy for me. This is my Trans Am. Yeah. Yeah. Easy for me. It was a 1980 <clears throat> and a half. Yeah. 1980 Turbo Trans Am. It, 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 um, it was not fast. Um, the motor was just, the design mechanically was just gosh awful. But I love the car because my brother bought the car new and I was with him the day he bought the car. And uh, it came in on the trailer, and the set, and I'm like, hey, hey, there's a Turbo Trans Am on the trailer. They're bringing in, and on the car hauler, and uh, the salesman's like, well, no, we don't have one. And we're, my brother and I, go, no, there it goes. And he bought that car. Came in, it came in. It didn't even get the pinstripes put on it. it had the eagle, you know, and all this, all yeah, the, the stuff. Yeah, the on the. <clears throat> yeah. So um, anyway, so my brother got married, and then he sold. He was selling the car. And my dad, I was um, junior or senior in high school, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, my dad bought the car from my brother. And, uh, I, you know, he was like, well, you're going to have to help make payments. And I worked, we had our own shop, and I worked at the shop with my dad and um, our, our family. And I think I might have made, we owed, at that time it was a three-year car note. It was a one and a half year commitment we had, you know, we had to make on that thing. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I think I made maybe two payments myself and my dad, you know. But anyway, it was um, so that car. Uh, we lost you the house. You paid the nineteen dollars a month. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, did. Yeah, no, I, did. I, I remember the. I remember how much the car, the payment was on the car, a whole nine yards. But my dad. Well, what was the payment on the it car? It was two seventy two a month. Wow. Okay. Two seventy two eighty six. Yeah, it was high, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a very my, expensive my car back in the day. My first truck that I bought. <laughs> 
the the payment was four fifty one twenty one, and I remember just like every month having to write that check. So right yeah, we check. lost. Uh, You're so old. That was terrible, <laughs> uh, but we did. We lost that uh, lost that car in, and a house, in a house fire. fire. Yeah, yep. yeah. So I saved. I, I'd kept the car, and uh, man, the car had been stolen, and we recovered it, and you know, just it had been through so many things, and and it meant a lot to me because my dad got it for me. You know, my parents, my mom and dad got it for mm-hmm. me. So it meant a lot to me, and I planned on keeping it forever. We had a house fire, and uh, we lost it in a house fire. I was accumulating stuff because my plan was for the kids to be able to take it to prom, you know, and always and, and do all that stuff. Because it was a car that I had whenever uh, their mom and I met. Mm. So, anyway. That's too bad. Yeah. Yep. So. Sounds like a great car. But, you know what? Well, yeah. But, you know, like, all the things we couldn't replace, you know, we still have. Mm-hmm. Like. The car is just a car. Yeah. When it, long story short, it's just a car. The sentiment behind it and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, I love my parents, everything they did for me. But it's just a car. Yeah. 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 Well, what about you, Pop? You got any? I'd say there's three different cars, and I'm having trouble deciding which. Ooh. They're kind of all, you know, pretty much every car I've ever had was was my, was my favorite car. Mm-hmm. But the first favorite car was the first thing that I drove when I got my license. You know, when I turned 16 and a minute, I was driving the banana yellow Ford 1967 pickup truck that my dad gave me. And yeah. it was, just, it was right. the ugliest thing. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it was, it was just banana yellow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I should have been ashamed to drive this other thing, but it was, you know, it was my wheels. It was you know? freedom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the instant I had it's my right. license, I was in that truck and I was driving all over yeah. Richardson and, you know, because, you know, yeah. there, there were only like 11 cars on the road back then. P- picking up uh, uh, Coke cans to... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's, you can get money for that. So there was the emotional attachment to that, like you said, like, you know, the one yeah. that your dad gives you. Yeah. Um, let's see. After that, uh, we sold that and whatever, or traded it in for the, you know, $97 it was worth in the trade-in. I got a 1972 Mustang, and that's what I drove from 18, from, from, you know, in my senior year of college, senior year in high school for, for whatever, the next whatever, however long I wrote. Loved it. I mean, it's a Mustang, you know. Mm-hmm. It, and it, did, it, it was in the years it didn't really look like the, the Mustang, the, the classic Mustang. It was mm-hmm. kind of the messed up 1970s style of Mustangs when they were bigger. And, Charles but still, Angels. Charles but it Angels. was, it was yeah. great. I loved that car, you know. Um, and then later on in life, after I got my first, like, kind of, re- well, not my first real job, but when I, started the company that I was with for a while and I bought myself a Cadillac and it was a Cadillac wow. Seville. I, I figured nice. that would make a nice. Cadillac Seville yeah. with like it's just 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 this you know sleek it would because it wasn't like that I guess it was a Seville is that right Seville or Deville it was, a, it was smaller yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's Cruella Deville. yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I think it was a Seville anyway yeah, but yeah. you know it was a it was a, it was a car it's it was a, it was a man's it's car, a Cadillac, and it was yep. smooth. And it was and black it, it, too, right? Yeah, it was black, and you know, I had you know, it's it, it just from that standpoint, it was like I had made it. I was driving a Cadillac, yeah. you know, and then awesome. ultimately after that, I got into my trucks, and I haven't looked back since then. Because then, yeah, you know, Danley, like, I've done all that stuff. That's Danley actually at. thought your your answer to this question was going to be the car I'm driving right now because it's the nicest thing I've driven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, 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 uh, a Hemi truck like yeah you, well I, yeah, yeah, the, yeah the I'm, suburban I, i'm not so once i got into suburban i never wanted anything else i'm never yeah. going back from trucks i just love yeah. trucks now so. just too they're too functional and nice and danley isn't there something about your dad's hemi truck that you wanted to tell him it's super fast as i'm sure that my brother and i have both found out yeah you separately could just, that it's it's very fast you could just tell me you don't have to tell him <laughs> yeah yeah just, just tell scott it, i drove it fast yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the story you know i missed the solstice the yeah little pontiac and then um you know, i had a 1976 Chevette Ooh. that um, I the first thing I ever really wheeled and dealed on yeah. uh, that I would love to just drive one more time yeah yeah because yeah, I, I bought it for $75 from a company that had a fleet of these things that had no air conditioning and it was a standard and they thought the motor was blown up everybody thought the motor was blown up and that's why I got it for $75 <laughs> it just had a bad pulley on the crankshaft so I replaced a crankshaft pulley. And By the way, is there a funnier word 
Crankshaft. Car, crankshaft. Yeah. Car crankshaft. related. <laughs> <laughs> Only Danley. Because <laughs> stop down on that one right there. <laughs> anyway, that was it. So, yeah, no, I ended up selling the motor back to this company for $200. <laughs> because they, <laughs> I bought the car for $75. I replaced that. I sold the, the motor back to the company for $200. And then uh, I told him, say, hey, it's the motor that came out of this other car. It was just this thing. And was, oh, well, good for you. So we want to buy it. I said, 200 bucks. <laughs> so, so then, uh, and, then I, and then they paid our shop to put it in. And then, uh, I, what a racket. then I sold the, the transmission and the clutch out of it. So now I have this car that has no trans, no motor, no trans, that I bought for $75. And I've, I've sold the pieces off for about, 100, or for about 300 bucks now. And then I bought a wrecked. Chevette uh, from a wrecking yard that was a four door and had an automatic transmission and air conditioning and a so, really nice crankshaft and a really <laughs> a really fine crankshaft. <laughs> put it all together and uh, I, I hopped the motor up just a, a hair. We put a header on it and a two barrel holly carburetor and. Uh, we went around in this little bitty Chevette, and I used to drag race Volkswagens in it. Because <laughs> all these, everybody, you know, back in the day, you know, everybody would hop up their little bugs or whatever, and yeah. they, you know, none of them would ever lose to a Chevette. A Chevette was just an embarrassment. And uh, so I would go out you there in that sure. thing and just drag them all over town. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so that I would like to drive that car one more time. And then yeah. we sold the car for $975. It's not a not a bad return overall no no so yeah it was huh. a fun little car i'd like to drive it one more time okay you have a time machine <laughs> and you get to go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice for raising me <laughs> what would it be you know younger greg this is what you really need to know <laughs> yep put them back <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good job, Colton. <laughs> That's the beauty of having like an actual producer. <laughs> Just little B. He See, does. It's the he, subtlety. It's really. Right? It's, it's his it's second subtle, trick. Subtle you suck him in with his first trick with the Michael Jackson story, then everybody forgets that he's there, and it's trick number two that really gets if, everybody. If he could have done it in the Michael Jackson voice, the only way it could have been. Anyway. Try it. <laughs> Try it. <Come> back. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first time as soon as you find out it's a he he <laughs> <laughs> Problems over there. <laughs> we almost had a spit take. <laughs> we did. We almost did. <laughs> oh. uh, the the um, first time I heard Colton's oh. Michael Jackson voice we were moving this desk that weighs like 350 pounds mm -hmm. and I'm in this really awkward position and we had moved all of these, like we had used a bunch of blankets to scoot it on the tile floor that's in the church. And uh, <laughs> he's, I've, I'm moving it and he pulls the blanket and the blanket slips out of his head hand and he's like, Oh no, a blanket hasn't slipped like that since I dangled my baby over a rail. And I was like, it's in such a bad spot to be holding this desk. <laughs> Colton is like literally, he's just ripped out, he's like ripped out the blanket. He's holding on to nothing. I'm holding this thing in like the worst position ever, trying not to start laughing and kill myself. And he's like, hold on, buddy. Oh, gosh. Hold on, blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, it's bad with the name yeah. too, right? Yeah, as soon as he grabs the desk back, he's like, it's okay, daddy's got you. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh. gosh. Uh, Entertaining. I don't, did you ever answer the question? Somewhat, yeah, somewhat no. terrifying, no. but very funny. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's he's been thinking. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking. There's and, a lot. And, 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 and I'm I'm looking for like the funny things, but honestly, I think I would I, I would I would take all all of that entertainment that we just went through, and I'd stop it back down to a little more serious answer, and that is, you were my first. Um, you you're not as good as being a father on your first as you are later on when you have more practice. So true. Uh, and I would say. I would tell the younger me, look for the moments, look for things to invest in. I learned that lesson more 
and you know, and, and we had times where I was I invested times and I did mm-hmm. things when you were later, but but earlier on I didn't I didn't know that it wasn't like I like I lived at the office and never spent time, but it's like cultivate moments, look for opportunities, look for things that otherwise they're going to pass by and say I I wish I had done that and I didn't. Um, so that I, I think honestly that would be that would be what I would go back and whisper in my ear and say don't don't miss this that's going to be a good thing don't let that go and go do something that you're not going to care about 10 years from now yeah that that's that's, that's very wise i i try to I, i'm i'm trying to learn that too you know okay. with my son that there's we had a uh, uh, justin bat from daddy daycare <laughs> daddy saturday from daddy saturday yeah, daddy saturday uh where he he has an intentional day a week that he he structures it like he does his work you know that there's there's certain hours that you're doing this and mm-hmm. he structures that so the kids get time with him and he does things that they like to do and investing in them and i think it's a really cool idea but yeah, yeah. But I, i'm i'm with you that, that's that's cool what about that's you? good advice for anybody what you pop a pop a cap uh for me i would say <laughs> that was his that was rapping, rapping name <laughs> my rapper name <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had to have a rapper name. Yeah, so that was mine. Mine, yeah. Is, mine is D Hoop. Yeah, yeah. Mine yep. was Papa Cap. <laughs> you know, if you got to go, go big, right? Yeah. So, um, um, I really like, I really like what Greg said. You can't steal it. You got to do gonna, your you own. Know, I'm not. I've got mine ready, Danley. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> but you know, we're I, waiting. I just, I just feel like, the, with what he said, the take advantage of the moments that you have so critical so important i remember one of my favorite things would be coming home from work and i would be exhausted i wouldn't even be able to get my shoes off and i would just get mobbed you know at the door and man it was the greatest thing it was it was fantastic so um but uh, for me i would say um we did we did this thing one year where well we bought we bought um we let the kids buy their own. I don't remember if they bought their own gift. We, you know, we, we gave bought them our money. own big gift. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, this so, was the year I I wanted to buy a bass and wasn't allowed to. My dad made me buy a guitar first. Right. I did. <laughs> Good. Good. I dad. did. <laughs> I, I did because I, I played bass and I didn't want him playing bass just because. He wanted to play bass just because I played bass. I and mean, how are you going to start a family band? Right. You're all playing <laughs> bass. Yeah, yeah, 14 bass, bass players yeah. up there. It's like a Wooten terrible. family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so anyway, and, and I didn't play that great. But the uh, the thing is, I really wanted him. I was And I and I tried explaining it. said, everything you're going to do on the guitar will translate over to the bass. It will 100% translate over to the bass. And I think this, if you want in a year or whenever, you know, we – We'll revisit it. I think when you want to play the bass, if you still want to play the bass, then um, you know you'll everything you learn now is going to be is going to be spot on. You're going to, and I think this is going to make you a better bass player. And so he bought all that. So being a good guitar player <clears throat> makes a good bass player. No, I played guitar for a year, not, <laughs> and then absolutely put it in not. a corner <laughs> in a case. See, I'm just yeah. weaponizing your nice yeah. thought. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> right. no, no, no. You're trying. You're trying to, but so so I'm gonna revisit that and say my big mistake was um, if I had something I wanted to, I had a chance to redo something. Um, hindsight, I would go out and get him the bass the first go around because when he picked it up it was something he just he did he immediately just start slapping it and no but he excelled at it really quick yeah and the bass well i, well, I mean literally slapping it I mean, yeah you know yeah I mean. no no yeah oh no uh, he excelled at it really quick but he fiddled with it constantly and he may have but he was you know and and i could show him how to make some really basic sounds and stuff but then uh, once he started getting more into to different influences that he really liked i was a basketball player same i can never remember. wayman tisdale wayman tisdale gosh mm-hmm. that's been bugging me i forget anyway so <laughs> just unrelated <laughs> no wayman, wayman tisdale so wayman tisdale hall of fame basketball player and also a grammy award-winning bassist yeah. okay yeah. okay yeah. sick absolutely he's passed he, he's passed away now but he mm. uh, phenomenal i think of him as a phenomenal bass player, he was a good mm-hmm. basketball. Did he do it at the same time? Uh, actually, he <laughs> yeah. he did do it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. when they yeah. would go into Chi- when they would go to Chicago, he would show up. He would take his bass and he would show up and just play sessions. Yeah, yeah. But he was he was just, no no no. Yeah. no we're was, talking yeah. about on the court. Yeah. 
<clears throat> oh, yes. You know, he yes. playing I defense he while I he was that, laying that, a line down. You know, like. Yeah. So. But he's just pulling up Bob Babbitt lines. As he's going to, <laughs> yeah, it was just it okay. Was, who the guy was, was a phenomenal bassist. But anyway, all these all these different influences and different people that influenced him, and you could see him trying to mimic it. And um, just, I mean, you always want your kid to find the thing. Like you feel like everybody has everybody. Mine is cocaine. Is it? Yeah. So you feel like everybody has their thing, and yours mm-hmm. is that. <laughs> and but it was it was like it was like this magical moment. Like, <laughs> good job, Greg. Greg, I, I'm, Greg's I'm about to go give himself Colton's I'm advice. Right, right, I'm right back. Visiting Colton's advice right now. I've never been spanked in my life. <laughs> so, but you know, I was thinking about like uh, I have another son that loves reptiles. You know, yeah. it's crazy about reptiles. I have another son that is phenomenal with tires, me- mechanical things. Yeah, he loves. And right now, I have a, a car engine at his house that we're going to build there, at his house. You know, and um, and I, he is, his son is four now, and mm-hmm. will probably be in the way and in the middle of everything. And I cannot wait. And then your yeah. daughter's a girl. <clears throat> my daughter's a girl, and that's where my car is. And I, <laughs> she and I yeah. will probably go over there and. If I ever do have any kind of social media presence, it'll be while I'm doing the body work on that car at her mm-hmm. house with her because she's already... And she'll probably do the painting and the pinstriping on it because she's a phenomenal so, artist. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to doing all those things with my kids as adults. But you want them to find their thing. And um, the minute he got the bass in his hand, I was like, should have got this first. Hmm. Because I was concerned, because the bass can be kind of a boring instrument, especially like for me. Super boring. (laughs) For me. (laughs) So so for me and and for you, clearly we're not very good at the bass. I'm awesome at it. I I play guitar. I can I can automatically play bass. For 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 bass players, yeah, no, not a chance. So uh, Leonard Skinner tried a thing with their guitarist, and they get rid of the bass player, and then the lead guy for Leonard Skinner's out there and fishing one night begging the bass player to come back to the band. <laughs> yeah, because like, he, yeah, he has guitar, a truck. Yeah. He, and That's the guitar exactly right. guy is killing us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. yeah anyway. But I, I will have to say that, that in particular, though, that was something that was, uh, I think for me, that it motivated me to learn the guitar, which has served me really well in mm-hmm. all of my pastoral ministry because oh, there's, man, nice. there's at least some point where the worship leader calls in sick and you can't lead worship. I just squeaked. <laughs> you can't. Uh, you can't. It's, it's like my grandmother's singing Jamona. voice. <laughs> it's you, pretty cool, though, when you're the pastor at your church is also typically the best guitarist at the church mm-hmm. and for certain the best bass player at the church. Oh. By a long. So at 14 years cool. old. So, yeah, we got it at 13. I was, uh, I was 15 when I got the bass. Were you 15? 15. Okay, so then... then he hasn't turned 16 yet, and we're I'm taking him to do studio sessions with uh, in less than a year. He's had it less than a year. I'm taking him to do studio sessions at a, a local uh, a local music studio where the guy the the groups the groups would come in. They would play songs. They would play their music, and if they didn't have a bass line that they were really comfortable with, then Ron would he would call me. I would and. We'd go over, or Tammy and I, or Tammy or somebody, one of us would go over with Lucas. We'd pick up a CD that had no bass track on it. All the music would be laid down on it, no bass track, because they didn't want him to have any preconceived idea about what should be on there. Mm-hmm. And it was everything from, uh, like, one of my favorite songs. I never, I never, I wanted a copy of it, and I regret that I don't have a copy of it. But it was mostly, it was probably 90% percussion, African style. Style, African mm-hmm. style, and uh, he put a bass line down for that, 15. And did it, he heard it one time. I don't remember hearing him play it in this room more than one time. Mm-hmm. He may have played it more than one time, but I do know when we went to the studio, it, once we got to the studio, he played it one time, and then we left. That's how I got his name, One Take Lukey. Yeah, so, <laughs> that was, I mean, that it was, was pretty close, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that just doesn't happen. And I go, he was the he was the songwriter for Leanne Rhymes and had his mm-hmm. had a local studio, and hmm. yeah, we, had a, we had a ton of fun with him. He went to our church for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Well, we well to wrap up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so go ahead. one thing. I was I was pre-gaming on my way over here. Oh, goodness. Just, just and, chugging. Chugging. Red Bull. Red Bull. <laughs> no, I, I, was, I, was, I was pre-gaming on my way over here. With some Jerry Reed, 
Hey, there we go. I, I know I know everybody here. They're all you're all music all lovers. All, yeah. all music connoisseurs. Music lover. And uh, <laughs> I was listening to uh, Amos Moses. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, you know, th- there if you Amos Moses and and I've been listening to a lot of Stevie Wonder lately. Mm-hmm. Do you think and, he's blind? Um, pass. <laughs> <laughs> we did say pass would you, you, be acceptable on any that. of our questions yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah. but the uh, um, sure, uh, he's, I'm sure he is, right? Right, sure. I don't know. There's evidence of the stick, contrary. Just stick but. with pass. Okay, well, I stick I with I pass. Don't step in that bear <laughs> trap. Yeah, okay, stick with gonna, pass. So moving on. But, so so I just want your your right off the cuff thoughts. This doesn't have to be anything with this. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, you know, just um, superstition. And Amos Moses, you take the guitar parts for that, uh-huh. and they are just this stylistically and stuff. There's just not a dime worth of difference between the two, in my opinion. Hmm. I need hmm. to go listen to it. Yeah, I I kind of know Amos Moses, but I'd have to go back and listen to it because it's probably been yeah. forever since I heard I, it. I'm listening to the guitar and the way he's just vibing on the thing. I'm like, man, he this could easily transfer over. Oh yeah, to any Motown sound, any you know, any I'm playing it in my head. Yeah, yep. so, and it, and just the the little just the rhythm part and the guy. And besides so, all that, Jerry Reed was Jerry so Reed good. was ridiculous oh, on the guitar. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. I, yeah. So anyway, did you ever hear that? There's a, a story about Elvis covering one of his songs, uh, "Guitar Man," and they couldn't figure out the guitar part, and so they called Jerry Reed. It's like eleven o'clock at night. They wake him up. No, they went to the river and got him. Oh, they the, went to the, the river. Oh, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, they, they called and he wasn't yeah. there, and then they had to go find him fishing. Yeah. And then he, they get him in the studio, and they're like, "We need you to play the guitar part for Guitar Man," and he was like, "Okay," and he sits down and starts playing. And he's like. You're gonna have to give me a minute. I don't know how I did this. <laughs> <laughs> took, it like a, took it like an hour to remember how he even played the part. Yep. And, and then he, I uh, understand. Yeah. And then he nailed it. And then, but they were like, yeah, back to no, yeah, so nobody else on the planet. That's what the guy, the guys yeah. in the studio are like. The only way he and Elvis was like, I want that Jerry Reed sound. And finally, the the studio musicians are are like. The only way we're going to get that is to get Jerry Reed in here because we can't figure out what the heck he did. Yep. And then he got in there and he couldn't figure out what the heck he did. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Jerry, but you know, Jerry but, Reed did a song called "The Claw." He wrote a. He wrote oh it, yeah, which is <laughs> which is kind of you know the holy grail for guitarists and, and the, the to have that picking. to have that kind of ability to it's finger picking, but it's finger picking mm-hmm. on nuclear Ridiculous. power. Yeah. Lee Harden attempted the claw. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, Rest you, in peace, Lee Harden's YouTube do you, channel. <laughs> do, you, do you know who else was a? a they they might not remember, but who was a phenomenal did, did all kind of kitschy country music stuff, but a phenomenal guitar player. The Jim Stafford. Oh yeah, it was insane. He was he did Donna Jim Stafford. He did some just like he wasn't real. He, his I don't even know how to describe his music. It was. Um, the stuff he was really popular for, but as far as a guitarist goes, he did. I watched him on the Tonight Show one time. He was doing Korg, just released one of their tricked out guitar things. You know, a keytar. Uh, yeah, something. We, that, we've uh, already uh, discussed our policy but, of keytars on this anyway, show. Anyway, so it wasn't Ow. actually a keytar, yeah. but it was some of the Korg crazy nonsense right. stuff. And he played uh, "Fly to the Bumblebee." Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. wow! Yeah. <laughs> and it was like it was incredible. And that was the first time. Except I was it like, was on a keytar. Yeah, it was well, actually. No, it sounds no, like it was, it was on a, like a guitar was, synthesizer. Was, no, 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 it was a guitar synthesizer. Yeah. yeah, it was. He was picking the strings, and it That's was crazy. It was. It, I was like, man, that guy's phenomenal. Yeah, I've and always then, heard that Glenn Campbell was. Well, a I was really going to say, if, 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 if we're talking it, great yeah. guitarists, that a lot of people don't know is Glenn, Glenn Campbell. Because Glenn, Glenn yeah. Campbell, in addition to being Glenn Campbell, yeah, as he, a or recording he artist, was more than just he was part of the Wrecking Crew. Yeah, 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 and he played on. Tons of sixties and seventies hits. You have no idea. It's Glenn Campbell. You right. think it's the guy in the band? Have Have you seen and, the documentary? Oh yeah, on and, that. Oh, yeah. so good. That. And he oh. was in Evil Dead, and Army of Darkness, and Glenn Campbell was. Uh, was he playing guitar? Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting I wonder, for it. I was waiting. I, I, just, if, I was if taking Bruce the Bruce Campbell bait. can play guitar. <laughs> not with a chainsaw <laughs> for a handy. <laughs> 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 Thank That's you for coming on. Uh, hey, thanks, guys. Uh, the Reverend and the Retro. But actually, do we get you to guys keep uh, the bullets? 
No, the bullets the bullets go with me. Those are expensive. Because <laughs> I, 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 I feel like a buck a piece right now. Gold yeah. right now. <laughs> we, we had a working title that you came up with. I forgot it already. But yeah, well, yeah, thanks thing. for tuning in. When I edit the episode, episode, we'll figure out what it is. <laughs> or bullets, beer, uh, butter, cups. And, and then <laughs> pizza <laughs> and bubbles. <laughs>